a concern with the two kind of species. This is that uh, within our African continent, that the ones, the, mo the, the ones which are more uh, actually being uh, poached, or the, the intentioned ones, compared to the uh, ivory and rhino horn, to which is on a high demand in most of our Asian countries. This the project was started in the early 50s by the late David uh, Shedrick, who was a very famous naturalist and also the founder, the senior warden of the Savo East National Park. But it was officially established in his memory after his death in 1977 in June. The full management having been offered to the widow by the name of Dr. Dave Daphne Shedrick. We have been able to reintegrate a total of 150 baby elephants back into the world since we officiated these plans. We are rescuing these elephants with an intention of bringing them up and then later on reintegrating them back into the wild where they can live to their normal wild life. So as you see them here, they will all go back into the world. Though joining different world families at a different times, this will depend on their personal characters, at what age would they have arrived in human hands, and also what would have caused them to lose their world families. So at the end, they will all go back into the world and live their natural life there. They are here, one, because of uh, being uh, that the mothers have been killed because of their ivory. Secondly, some of them have lost their mothers because of the fight that we are experiencing in between human and wild animals. Man's population on the planet has risen, and most likely we have an encroach on the wild land. We have closed up their corridors, and the majority of those communities living along the national parks, they depend on farming. When the wild animals run out of food in the wild, most likely they end up into our farms. Found in invented these farms, majority of them will be beaten, some even killed, some of them will be left wounded. That reason to why they are here, some of them, it is because of natural reasons. This is that uh, some who are rescued or found falling down water wells. Some of the water wells are natural to others. It is used by man. Some of them, their mothers have died from uh, diseases or because of starvation in the world, which is part of uh, nature. So as I talk today, we have got a total of 21 baby elephants who will be coming down here into two crops. We can't bring them all together. I've said that they are all born of different characters. If you put them all together, then it will be very difficult for us to control them. Some are more greedy than the others. Some even won't mind about the little ones. So we are putting them into crops for us to be able to handle them. As you came in, I think, on your left hand, you have seen those wooden houses. Those are their bedrooms where they do spend the nights. Each elephant has got a room where he or she spends the night with a different keeper on every night. We are shifting among them all so that they used to all the keepers. We can't work with specifics because if you do that, then you'll be creating an enmity in between you or in between the human family and the elephant family. So uh, we have to keep on rotating among us more so that they use to everyone. Though they will be selective of the keepers, but we try to avoid them from being attached to one individual. In the room, they do have but mattresses where when they go down to sleep, as well, we have to cover them with blankets to make sure that uh, they are protected from cold. We can't leave them into the cold. If you do that, then you risk losing them through pneumonia, which is very difficult to treat in elephants. They do not cough. Their, uh, their lungs are attached to the rib cages. Because of this, 
there is nothing that you can learn in advance so that you can be able to begin treating them. It is until the last time that you'll see some water dropping out of the trunks. And when these begins, they don't last for more than a day. So within that short period, there's nothing that you can do to help it. You might like wonder what normally happens when they're back into the world, because they doesn't have got these shoulders, neither the blankets. For mature elephants who will sleep while standing, it's only the calves who will go on lying down on the ground. So the younger ones, as they go down to lie on the ground, they, the older ones standing, they make sure that uh, the younger ones are kept among the more, gaining all that warmth that generates from the old ones to keep them warm. And also their mother's milk is so rich that it will help some of them uh, from or prevent them from catching some of these diseases. While in our hands in the nursery here, we are not using elephant's milk. We can go into the wild to get the real milk of the wild elephants. There is no human who can dare risk his or her life by trying to milk a wild elephant. <laughs> <laughs> and also, cow elephants do not reproduce enough milk for more than one baby. So if you would have got that chance, it means that you will be risking the life of the other baby. So we can't do this. Elephants have got a very poor uh, fat digestion system. If you feed them on any milk with fats in it, automatically they will diarrhea to death. To that reason, we can't feed them on cow's milk or any other animal's milk. We will be killing them. The kind of the milk that we are using, it is a human baby formula, which is manufactured in UK, meant for human baby consumption. We are feeding them at allowance of after every three hours. It's called SMA Gold, meant for baby, uh, human baby consumption. So they stay in the nursery here until minimum age of about uh, uh, two years. Maximum age in the nursery, it is uh, three years. After th these three years, they go or be moved into rehabilitation centers in the Savo East National Park. We have got two of them, where we will continue taking care of them until minimum age of about five years, maximum age in the rehabilitation centers, it is 10 years. I've mentioned it already that uh, we will not uh, force them to go back into the wild. We will give them time to decide by themselves once they are ready to go, they will live at their own desired time. Joining different world families, I mentioned already about their natural characters. Secondly, what caused them to join human families and at what age had they arrived in human hearts. The good thing is that at the end, they will all walk back into the world and live their natural life there. They have been born of different ages. I'll be giving their age, and the age that I'll be giving is not of their exact death of the birth. We were not there when they were being born. We have just walked into their lives. In detecting their ages, we look upon some physical features, such as the umbilical cords, which will normally cut off after a month. Beneath their feet, there is a cell of skin that will normally peel off after three months. They start teething of their molars as from the age of uh, two months to around four months. The tusk will begin showing out as from the age of uh, two years old. Earlier is about 22 months old. You can uh, see the tusk coming out. And then uh, as well, we will look at the performance of the trunk, which is a very useful part of the body that uh, will normally perfect at the age of uh, eight months. They will start learning on how to feed on vegetation as from the age of uh, six to around eight months. So, when they do the mothers in the world, it does not mean that uh, all the other family members will automatically abandon them. They will be adapted into these groups and the problem is that they will begin lacking behind the group 